Jesus Freak here. Now I uh, mentioned this, I showed this in a previous video, and I did kind of rush this out because it was more, you know, something I wanted to do for myself. And turned out there was actual demand, which I didn't expect with Tully Leggy having something better out. But... <laughs> You see, the text in this edition was something I had done about 20 years ago, as I mentioned then. And a lot of it was done automatically. I was uh, using Word for Windows 2.0 at the time, and uh, most of what I did was done through macros I wrote in Word Basic to try to get a lot of the obsolete spellings ironed out automatically. And occasionally it overcorrected and I didn't notice it. So, yeah, there's some typographical issues. There's also a few typesetting issues related to the fact that certain things have to be done manually in the tool I was using, which is LaTeX. Spelled like latex. Don't ask, you know. Oh, can't think about what was going on in Donald Duth's mind or whatever. But there are a few places where I clearly was originally typesetting for a different size sheet of paper and didn't compensate for it everywhere, like you can see here here in um, 1 Corinthians 11.2, you see the indent's a little bit too far, because I was originally doing this for probably uh, letter paper, which is 8.5 inches by 11, and this is 6 by 9 and I didn't correctly compensate everywhere. This is kind of a bit rushed. As for oddities in the spellings of names, as well as capitalizations, that was actually intentional, and I wanted to keep it exactly as it was. Because, in many cases, this was a deliberate choice by the translation uh, translators either in 1557 or 1560 or 1576 when this revision was done so the rather wayward capitalization you see here is the 1587 capitalization the spelling, now I could have done it in an imitation of uh, 1769 spelling, but I did it in 2002 spelling. So, oh, there's some words that are spelled a little bit unusually if you're used to a KJV. Now, the format being more or less that of the KJV, that's just the way it was. In fact, the Geneva Bible pioneered this verse-by-verse -verse layout in English. And the King James copied that. In fact, the King James copied a lot of things from Geneva. It may be ironic that occasionally the New King James will read closer to Geneva than to the King James. There are some peculiarities to the Geneva and uh, to Thompson's revision here. For example, it always refers to Timotheus rather than Timothy, where the KJV kind of goes back and forth. 
it doesn't attribute Hebrews to Paul. See, I didn't make up these book titles. They come right out of Thompson. Right down to the explicit attribution of Acts to Luke. So I just figured, you know, wanted to uh, clarify a few things about this. And, you know, anyone who might have already managed to get one, one because I happened to link it in one of the comments, which I doubt. Uh, you know, m maybe Pastor Brett might might have been I uh, got one because he said and uh, showed he was interested. But. As I said in the previous video, the reason I did this originally was because I wanted to clear up some uh, misconceptions that were going around at the time about the Geneva Bible translation. That, for example, some people had thought that it had been squelched because it was an inferior translation, or because it had had some said a number of errors. And no, it was squelched for political reasons. It was squelched for the notes. And that's why this is a text-only version. Anyway, Jesus freak out. 